Hello, everyone out there in podcast world. Hope you're having a wonderful day. Uh, you're listening to or watching the Service Business Mastery Podcast. I'm your host, Tersh Blissett. Uh, it's not our normal day to go live, but uh, our schedule has been pretty packed. My schedule has been pretty packed uh, with, if you've been following along, I was at the HVAC school symposium last week, which was amazing. Uh, uh, if you have, if you didn't buy a virtual pass, get a virtual pass. I, I, it's only for like a month, but uh, it's 12 bucks and there's so much cool information. I mean, I was nerding out like crazy on, on air conditioning and stuff, but uh, with that happening, and then I had some training going on this week, I, I really couldn't fit a whole lot into my schedule. So here we are Thursday, and uh, I got my buddy Joshua Crouch here with uh, Relentless Digital, and we're going to talk about uh, 10 ways to grow your business without spending a, a ton of cash and <laughs> being a, uh, a serial entrepreneur. Um, Zach Ciotta says, I shouldn't say that because it sounds like a serial killer, but I, I swear it's, it's not, it's completely unrelated. Uh, but <laughs> starting several businesses, bootstrapping them, um, spending cash is very easy when you're first starting out. And, and especially when you start to make a little bit of money and then you're like, okay, I need to spend money to more, make more money. And so it's a very slippery slope. Uh, but what we're going to do is we're going to talk about ways that you can bootstrap your company and, and even grow it if it's already started without spending a ton of cash. Uh, and I'm super excited about that. And I'm super excited about Josh because uh, Relentless Digital is not a new agency, but he's, he's going full time here. Uh, and so I'm, I'm super excited to see and watch his uh, progress and as, as he's growing along with the company. With that being said, welcome to the show, man. Thanks, Tersh. Appreciate you having me on. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely, buddy. So uh, first of all, tell everybody what Relentless Digital is and how you came about starting it. Well, I'll, st I'll start with the how it began because it wasn't planned, um, like most good businesses, right? They just kind of happen. And uh, so we were doing really well. I've been in the HVAC world for the last nine years. Uh, I've been with three different companies, grown three different companies, or at least been a part of the growth, and uh, gotten gotten really good at the business and the operations, that side of things. And I had a couple people reach out that wanted some help with their marketing. And so I figured I'd give it a shot and see if I could duplicate the results we were having. Mm -hmm. And things have just kind of taken off from there. So uh, that was actually, uh, I just got the GoDaddy domain renewal reminder that was March 17th of last year. And you, if you remember last year, March, I think 16th yeah, was sorry. like the start of the shutdown of the country. So yep. it was literally like the day after I technically started my agency. Um, so while everything was shut down, I just focused on working, <laughs> right. working during the day, working at night, working on the weekend. So, um, but the focus of what we do is digital marketing. But I think I come into it with a different perspective because there's a lot of insight that I can give from growing other HVAC companies mm -hmm. on how to do it and do it to, to take your digital approach and increase that with offline strategies that kind of enhance and, and uh, grow your business that way. Yeah, I love that that thought process because, um, and, and I like the fact that you've you've been in the industry for what, nine years or so. And, um, and not just you, but your, your wife has too. And so like your whole family is just, you're all ate up with some air conditioning and, and HVAC stuff. So <laughs> that's, that's really cool. I mean, it's, it, and the thing about it is, is I remember, I mean, it could have been more than a year, two years ago, something like that, whenever you and I were, were talking about it and, where I was like, oh, I wonder how you do this. And you're like, you know what? I wonder how you do that too. Let me figure it out. And the next thing you know, I talked to you the next day and you're like, oh yeah, I figured it out. I'm like, oh man, that's, that's wild, dude. <laughs> that's how I figured out the name of the business. I, you know, I, I had to think about it for a little bit. And I'm like, you know what? I've been told that I am relentless. So let's just go with that. It's a good name. Um, and I love, I've, I grew up a, a big fan of the rock with the bowl and everything else. So I'm like, well, let's just, let's just merge these things together and it, it makes sense. So <laughs> Yeah, Here we are. Dude, that's awesome, man. So I'm excited. And, and we try to keep these episodes at 20 or 30 minutes. And a lot of times we dig into super deep rabbit holes. So, but with that being said, uh, let's go ahead and dive into this, uh, this rabbit hole here of, of these ways to grow, grow our business. So what, how would you say getting started? 
Well, the big problem I see, and I, especially now March, especially in the southern, it's air conditioning season has not taken off yet. And right. up here in the northern parts of the country, we still got probably two months until it takes off. And not a lot of people plan their marketing around this. Mm-hmm. And what happens is they look to go spend money on pay-per-click, on anything they can spend money on. But the problem is if there's no demand for the services, you are literally just pissing that money away. Yeah. And there's no point in spending that money when you could do some other things that are much lower cost. Mm-hmm. Um, it takes some work and some elbow grease to get them going. But if you have other strategies, you're going to continually get referrals. You're going to continually have people contacting you. They're going to be looking at for remodel projects, stuff that's just going to keep the cash flowing in your business. Yeah. So what, what some of those ideas that you have going on there? Well, uh, the first one for me, and this one is probably about as cheap as it gets is emailing your customer base. Um, Mm. that that goes and, and most people, you know, there's house call pro, all these service site and all these great software programs, which right. can connect to email marketing platforms or some of them have them in house. And when people think emailing their audience, they kind of get frightened because they think of like the big retail companies who are constantly saying, you know, 10% off this week, 15% off, $200 off of this. And, and everybody hates those gaps. Yes, absolutely. But that's, I'm, I'm like, junk mail or unsubscribe, you know, what I mean? all the time. <laughs> I constantly am putting stuff in spam like that, but the ones that I keep, um, the emails that I keep are the ones that are educational and the ones that are going to enhance not only my life, my understanding, um, just give some value back. So what I've done, uh, at the company I was previously at and before was, um, just develop educational based emails. Uh, mm. it started just as text and images, which is you know, probably the most basic way to start. Yeah. And it started to grow into video, which I, I start doing for my marketing agency as well. And I, I know that's, I mean, you know, as well as I do, video is super, super powerful. Oh, yeah. And it is literally, you already, you already paid for the phone or at least you're paying for the phone. So <laughs> there's no extra cost there. Right. And I think I took your advice and got like a $30 Movo set, which got it's a good. microphone and, and that's it. It's yeah, nuts um, how it, it's wild how much better it sounds whenever you, you you just make that small investment there, and just practice, practice, practice. That's listen to my first podcast episode and then listen to this episode, and you be the judge of it. I mean, I haven't gone to voice. <clears throat> here I am clearing my throat. I haven't gone to any voice coaching classes or stuff stuff like that. It's just do it, do it, do it until you, it's just naturally, it gets better. You flow better and everything else. Yeah. And you know, the thing is you don't have to reinvent the wheel to make a video or to make even a blog post, go to Google, just go to the regular search bar, type in furnace repair, AC repair, plumbing repair, drain cleaning, type in something, mm-hmm. go down to the spot where it says people also ask. Oh yeah. And like then that. what happens? So there's usually like four selections there. And if you click one of those, if it's, Hey, let's say this question is interesting and you click those like three more questions pop up and then three more and then three more. So literally in probably an hour or two, if you spend a little bit of time doing research, you can, pr- I literally did this for my past boss. He wasn't mm-hmm. a big fan of making videos himself. Um, so, but I literally have like an entire page full of just content ideas. And then all you gotta do is find the ones that you want to talk about and talk about them. Um, I, I know that makes it sound really easy because I know getting right. from the camera, all that stuff, it's a different topic for a different day. But <laughs> if you wanna start, this is the easiest way to find content ideas that people actually search Google for. So you take those, make them into a video, email it out. You got very easy ways to create content on social media and on your website and on uh, through email. So would you use those videos? Would you add them to a YouTube channel too, or just, um, just use them in your, in your email? So if you look at marketing, like a, like an ecosystem, Mm -hmm. um, I would put it on YouTube first, Mm -hmm. then I would embed it And if you have a website company, have have your website company embed the video in a blog post and you Mm -hmm. can use either rev.com or Sonic 
I think Sonics. Is that yes, the one yeah, that yes. I heard you and uh -huh. you and Chris? I, I stalk Chris a little bit. So. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I uh, yeah, that's one I use. It's, it's Sonics or Sonics, and uh, yeah. I like it, it because it picks up my redneck voice and it it translates <laughs> words <laughs> good now. <laughs> so they'll transcribe everything, which can literally create like a blog post for you. So you don't have to type it out. You don't. Have to, I mean, you may have to edit it a little bit, and then uh, so you embed embed that on your website. And then you can also upload that to any social media, maybe outside of Instagram. I think Instagram is more of like a short video, but yeah, you know, Facebook, LinkedIn, whatever social media you're familiar with and you got content and you can share yeah. that to local. And that's the best thing. If you create helpful content, local Facebook groups usually allow you to share that stuff. I did that oh. with the, the previous company I worked with. I had a post and I should have pulled it up here. We had that um, not the, not that long ago, early February. We had that uh, polar vortex or whatever they whatever yeah. they were oh, now. Yeah. I made a post. I shared it on a couple local groups, and I think the post I didn't spend any money on this. The post had like sixteen or seventeen thousand people that reached. I remember seeing and hundred hundred however, however many comments and like I mean it was just crazy how how much traction that post got. So did you embed that? Did you um, add a link from YouTube? Is that okay? Because at one time I heard that you Facebook and YouTube don't really get along. Like you need to add it, embed it straight into Facebook, not add a link. With Facebook, it's better to have the original video file and upload it into Facebook by itself. You'll get more reach that way. Okay. So... If now, if you're gonna, and this gets this where it gets all different topics, but with <laughs> YouTube, YouTube is Google's baby brother. Uh -huh. So you definitely want on your website, you want the YouTube link mm. in Embedded in your in, uh, in your blog or on your website because that's that'll have some extra pop for you. So <clears throat> when we when we're adding YouTube videos, we're transcribing and adding it to the YouTube video, right? And then when we actually put it on our blog post we're putting a transcription down below. Is it okay just to slap the transcription down below and let it ride? Or do we need to actually turn that transcription into like a paragraph type stuff? I mean, that sounds like a lot of work. I mean, I, ideally you would, but there's no harm in not doing it okay. <laughs> and not formatting it. Yeah. The SEO part of my brain now is like, well, you should probably make a header here and do all this type of stuff. But now it's, if you're just starting out, don't worry about all that stuff. Just get the content out there. Mm -hmm. That'll be helpful in its own right. So do we, is there very much um, validity to link in your website to the YouTube channel? I mean, is that, is that going to get you anything really? Or is it mainly you get a lot of that juice from making the blog post? So a hard question to answer, but the people I've seen it do, seen do it well yeah rank really well for a ton of keywords um okay and i know you and i have talked about a couple of those people i don't have yeah. their permission to share their name or company or anything like that but they're they're out there so yeah. and there's probably a lot of your listeners if they listen to this type of stuff they probably know who they are go to their website and just you just look at what they're doing and try to try to duplicate i mean yeah. it's you know don't reinvent the wheel but there are very easy ways to get content out there that's helpful to your audience and will get shared a lot. Okay. Okay, cool. Sweet. All right. Sorry to hijack your whole list of things <laughs> there. I just, <laughs> my brain starts going in a rabbit hole and I'm like, man, I wonder about this. I wonder about that. You know? <laughs> I just get distracted by your suit. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, that was my target. So uh, it was achieved. That goal was that, that target was achieved. So we're good. <laughs> Um, so, so what do we have next? What do we have next on your list there? Well, so one of, one of my favorites and direct mail gets a bad rap. Um, rightfully so, because a lot of times people will send out thousands of pieces to completely cold audiences. It's hmm. the same thing like doing Facebook ads or pay-per-click ads to people who have no idea who you are. So I prefer to do targeted direct mail to people who we just serviced and then give them a reason to hire us back at some point in the future with gift cards, referral cards. Um, and with the CRM programs that are out there today, 
it's very easy to automatically set up weekly reports, especially I'll, I'll name drop Service Titan. Service Titan's great this way. Mm-hmm. Every Monday morning, 6 a.m., I had a report in my inbox. I formatted, took about five minutes to format the what I wanted, sent it off to the company I use for direct mail. It was done. So, I mean, so, there's a little, there's a little cost to that one, yeah. but the, but the concept is we have, um, and I know not everyone has them, but it's, it's a retail concept. When you go and you spend $50 at a retail store, what do they usually do? They give you store bucks or right. store cash to come back. And it's the same concept. Now it's a, you know, it's a little different for some business models, but HVAC right. is a pretty regular where we mm-hmm. see people once or twice a year, give them a, a gift card to come back and use you again in the next season. Like right now when it's slow, they might have a gift card. You can target that audience again and say, hey, maybe you can double your gift card. If you're really slow, we're going to allow you to double your gift card if you hire and book us between March 15th and April 15th. Okay. Um, so is there is there a frequency that you found was a sweet spot there for like HVAC or plumbing or, you know, geothermal versus generators or like i'm wondering how long after we visited that person should we be sending direct mail I, because obviously you want to stay top of mind but at the same time you don't want to waste money and then uh, you don't want us to be spammy at the same time you know what i mean sure so the sequence that worked for us is the usually about a week after we'll send them a thank you gift card okay. so it's got a little little flip open mail piece that says, you know, thank you for hiring the, the such and such team. And here's a gift card to use for any of any of our future services. And then that same report, and this is the really nice part, especially if you have a, a good vendor, um, that same report, I only have to send it once. And then three weeks later, they take that same list and they mail out a referral piece. Mm-hmm. And that referral piece has a um, a special looking card to hand so they can hand it to one of their friends or relatives, neighbors, et cetera. And then they also get a second gift card. So they would have like two $25 gift cards and then their friend would have 50 bucks to use us. Hmm. And you only did it to those people that you were working with in the past, or did you actually do any kind of like the clover leaf stuff? I did not do the clover leaf stuff. No. Um, that would have been next on my list to do though, is something where, hey, three houses this way, three this way, three across the street, because they obviously, most people are going to see your trucks mm-hmm. uh, pretty regularly. So that would be the next best thing to do if you want to expand on that, is to get the houses right next to them. Mm-hmm. You know, because a lot of times those people talk or they see each other. So there's, there's, a good, there's good vibes going on there when you do that. Man, there was something that uh, I don't know if it was y'all or somebody else. And, and, and Josh and I, we knew each other from a, a, a peer-to-peer mastermind group, a, a, a networking group. I think we knew each other from a peer-to-peer group before that. Before that one. Yeah, we did actually. <laughs> so we've, we've kind of gone through groups together, um, which was cool. Uh, but somebody, somebody in that group, I mean, I don't know who it, I see so much content all all the time it's just like this brain only has so and it's it's mush anyways so the little bit that sticks in there i mean it doesn't have a whole lot of traction there uh but there they did something to the effect of and i thought this was a great idea and i don't know why i've never implemented it but they had great success with it and it was something like hey we to be we want you to be safe we're going to be doing a system replacement if your kids see our equipment out in the yard, please just make sure that to let them know that not to climb on it. So it's, it's letting them know to be safe. And, or if you're a digger, like we're getting ready to dig a hole, make sure kids don't climb in the hole. At the same time, you're letting them be safe, let them know to be safe, but you're also letting them know, Hey, look, ask we're them. here. Ask, we're in yeah, the neighborhood. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Ask these people what you thought, what they thought about our work and, and everything. So, oh, and by the way, if you want to hire us, we'll give you $50 <laughs> off the of service. <laughs> yeah, something like that. And, and I thought that was cool to put as a door hanger, like Cloverleaf, that as a door hanger even. Um, so like a salesperson or a comfort specialist after they've closed the job, do that. I don't know. That's just me. I just thought that was a cool idea. I, I haven't tried it. I don't know if it works or doesn't work, but it's just a cool idea. Yeah, no, I, I, I find that the people that have already 
spent money with you, obviously they know, like, and trust you better than anybody else. They're going to be your biggest advocates, both online and offline. Mm -hmm. So, and I, I asked this question in my own Facebook page a couple of weeks ago and I asked like, what's the number one problem? And, um, and then people were saying, uh, or no, what's the what, uh, number one way they grow their business? And people were saying word of mouth. So I kept asking these people, I said, well, do you passively grow with word of mouth or do you actively elicit those responses? And most are like, well, they just come in when they come in. I'm like, well, why don't you try to control that a little bit yeah. and push for referrals? Like my, my old email, I don't know if I have it set up on my marketing agency, but uh, my old email used to have right on the, on the bottom. If you are looking for XYZ services or you hear anyone looking for these, please have them reach out to me. That's just um, something so small, but you just don't think to do that. Like, it's just a given. It's like, if you build it, they will come. You know what yeah. I mean? But in reality, yeah. it's like, that is not the case. <laughs> no, and I, I just, I find that people do not elicit or ask for referrals. Just like they don't ask, they, they, they have, they're hesitant to ask for reviews. Or you the know, close and, on the end of the sale, like uh, ask for the close. Yeah, I struggle with that. For, I'm guilty of that one. You know, and if you, and if you have, and if you're slow, go back, especially the small, if small shops that maybe don't have a good marketing strategy, maybe aren't good at marketing, just call your, call your old customers and see how they're doing. Yeah. You, you'd be surprised what all of a sudden they're like, oh yeah, you know, this thing's been kind of acting up. Well, did you try that? Okay. Well, why don't we set up an appointment to come out and look at it? Like you just have to communicate with your old customers. We're all looking for that shiny new object. Like one of Tersh's suits just kind of standing out there and we're, we're looking for um, this new customer that's going to be this huge $30,000. Well, they don't, those are like uh, leprechauns. <laughs> Use the St. Patty's Day. Yeah. They're like leprechauns. You're not going to, you're not going to find them very often if you do. Yeah. There's not many pots of gold out there. You have to kind of grow that organically. So. Yeah, no, I, that's just preaching to the choir here. Like I, and I, I'm so guilty of that myself. I have this pot uh, or bucket that is, has all these holes in it. And I'm like steady filling them, steady filling them. I'm watching my, my, my KPIs, uh, watching all of my different numbers from Google analytics and, and my GMB stuff. And then it's like, man, I have all these visits. I have all these conversions, like, but I'm not growing or like I'm stagnant. And then you look at all of the people that you lost over the past year and you're like, oof, that's a terrifying number. Yeah. If you just plug some of those holes instead of, I don't know what the industry average is anymore. It's like 20 to 30% annually that at least that's what people tell you that you might lose as far as customers. But if you can make that 10% or 15% and reduce that number, now all of a sudden you don't have to go out and get that many more customers to keep your schedule full and to grow. And Again, you know, marketing and the level of service and everything that you do, they really all work hand in hand because all the great sales trainers talk about options. Yeah. Well, guess what those options allow you to do later? Remarket and retarget those people who did not get that work done. Amazing. So that's how we grew. <sighs> that, that is how we grew last year. Uh, having those additional options that it, it wasn't a no, it was just a not right now. And then All of a sudden on. they want to do it later, don't they? Yeah, circle back, yep. especially when they were stuck in their house and getting irritated with the stuff. And now they have an option sheet that says, that says like all these things that we recommended, like, you know what? That's like on the back of my mind. Like I'm just thinking about that constantly. And then, and then a phone call from us and you're like, yes, let's do it. I've been thinking yeah. about it. I just haven't reached out to you. Let's do it. Yeah. I mean, it's, when you, when you really break marketing down, it's not as difficult as everyone makes it. The problem is you have to put in the work. You have to put in the time. And that consistency in time, though, that, that's just the hardest thing for me because I, I have these, what I would consider million-dollar ideas. Now, I mean, maybe they are, maybe they aren't. But then it's just me implementing them or following through with, with them because I love – I absolutely love Zapier. And you want to know why? Because I, I figured can we were going to get into this a little bit. I know. It's the, I, my nerd came out as soon as I got on the Zoom with you. So as soon as I set up a Zapier, I ain't got to worry about it. You know what I mean? And 
that's my problem with marketing, creating a content calendar. So you and I, we spoke a little bit uh, in message and, and talked about Airtable and integrating Airtable and Buffer and everything else um, with Zapier. And I can just create a whole calendar and forget about it. Like I set it for a month and just forget about it. But then what happens is that month runs out. And then I have to set another date to fill in another month. And I'm like, oh, but I have all these fires over here I need to put Uh in. And I I, I have this other stuff over here. And what about this shiny object over here? And then I interview somebody on a podcast and they're like, oh, this is a great product. And I'm like, yes, it is a great product. Let's try that out. And then you just completely forget about everything to do with the content calendar. (laughs) No, and well, and, and to, to your point, so for Zapier, it's, I know a lot of people get kind of scared, scared by Zapier and they kind of just, it's this big, scary thing over here. The beautiful thing about Zapier is it takes most, if not all of the coding out of creating stuff. So if you have like House Call Pro and Service Titan, I know have an integration with them because I have clients and just personally, I've, <clears throat> I've worked with them it allows you to do so many things like the email marketing we're talking about. Now let's say you don't want to pay the money for marketing pro marketing pro can be useful. If you know how to use it, it is a beast in its own right. Yeah. And maybe you don't want to pay whatever Whatever the fee is. (laughs) (laughs) Um, You can get a constant contact account or something and it's 70 bucks a month. And do a poor man's way of the same thing by the job types that you go to or, but Zapier can help you filter all of that stuff. So if you leave an estimate or you have a job type for an estimate that is open, you can still filter that out and and get email sequences in front of those people. Okay. So I have another nerdish, nerdish question with constant contact. Cause I'm, I'm pretty familiar with MailChimp, but not familiar at all with constant contact. Um, Are you able to set up, um, drip campaigns in constant contact. So if you did a sales call and estimate, you could set up like a 365 day follow-up process within yep. constant contact. Yeah, they can do. Yeah. They're, they're really good. It's honestly for me, <clears throat> cause I've used MailChimp as well. Constant contact's a little simpler. Okay. Um, just how everything's laid out. Yeah. Uh, MailChimp is, is really good and they integrate with like everything. That's the reason well, it, why it, that was my go-to because As soon as it popped up on Zapier, then I was like, I have a MailChimp account. Let's try it out and see how it goes. That type of stuff. Well, and you know, you you touched on your your social media and Zapier and stuff like that. One thing that I had set up that is still set up to this day is your Google reviews. You take your Google reviews and repurpose those. Mm. So um, Google My Business has an integration with Zapier. The only thing you can do is when you get new reviews, you can take those and you can do something with them. And what I chose to do is put them on our social media accounts. Now you're going to get that. You're going to have to use the same image or same photo every time, but it's constantly adding content and five stars. You know, you're getting, cause you can filter that too. I filtered mine by reviews that had five stars and comments. So somebody, uh, uh, all my one stars get sent to Facebook. All of my two stars get sent uh, to Instagram. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> that would be. That's what I would do. <laughs> you know, it, it would be interesting to find somebody's Facebook account that was like promoting one star reviews. That would be just if they did it one time. That would be very interesting. To me. Well, you know, it's the whole concept of like let's just let's elephant in the room. Let's put it out there. You know what I mean? Like let's talk about it. Let's see what yeah. you know. It happened. We messed up. We own it. Let's don't do it again. This is how we (laughs) fixed it. You know, you could do it that way. Not me. It's my child. Like if I get a one star review, I'm like, we're fighting. Like I'm. Oh yeah. Ready to bows. You know. (laughs) The 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 blood's boiling for me, and I'm trying to figure out what the hell happened. I mean, I mean, uh, ironically, before I left, before I officially left, we had we hadn't had a one star review in like probably 14, 16 months, something like that. And one came through like three weeks ago mm. and it was like a Saturday night. And I'm like texting everybody in the comment, like what happened? Like, what, whoa, what is this? What is this? We're trying to figure it all out. And, but uh, it's good that you take that stuff personally because it means you care. If you it don't is. care about it, well, then you're probably in the wrong industry. Very true. Very true. The worst ones are the ones that 
either it's not your client and they're just, it's a fake review or when it was something beyond your control. Cause I mean, if it's something that I did, like I stepped through your ceiling and like, but here's the thing we've stepped through ceilings, we've flooded houses and gotten five-star reviews because of how we handled it after the fact, but we've gotten one-star reviews because a property management company wouldn't approve a water heater replacement. And so the tenant took it out on us and I'm like, Oh, like I had no control over that situation. Uh, There is. So Google is making a concerted effort. This is total sidebar, but Google's making a concerted effort. They just made an update not that long ago to make it easier to have like, to kind of filter out the review process for you to report them. It used to be like you could report it and you could just report it as spam. And that was like the only option, Mm -hmm. but now they have like a list of seven or eight options. I think that you can actually report those reviews and flag them just for FYI for anyone listening. Cause um, you know, if you're listening, you probably have had a one-star review in your life. If you haven't just be, be known that you can report it. If it is legitimately like fake, (laughs) if it's real, if it's real, you got to call the customer. You got to try to, hash that out with them but and i mean not only that i mean what are your thoughts on this and this is completely sidebar i am so sorry that this is not i mean it is kind of a way to grow your business too but what do you think about a business that has you know 500 reviews and they're all five stars oh it's funny like that's fake because i mean we have tons of and knock on wood like don't go out there and just give us one stars because I'd say this, but we have five stars and I mean, we're close to 200 or something like that. Um, But some people, they really feel like if it's, if if you don't have a 4.9 or 4.7, then all your reviews are fake. I've seen, I've seen those posts and I, I laugh because here's the thing, regardless of what someone says statistically. Now you remember when they take statistics, they're talking restaurants, hotels, restaurants, obviously, Mm -hmm them having a 4.0 is a good thing. Like <laughs> right. for service businesses, people want to see, they want to see as close to five. You're, you're in their personal space working. Yeah, yeah. Um, I had that, I had a little sidebar conversation with uh, Travis Ringy. He's got like a zillion reviews over there. And yeah, uh, we were both laughing because somebody said, well, I'd rather have like a 4.5. I said, well, I'll take my 4.9 or 5.0 all day, every day over your 4.5. I don't care how many reviews you have, but the, the higher your rating, the better because, and this is a misconception. People think, wow, the more reviews I get, the higher I'm going to rank on Google. And that's totally not true. It, it, it helps. But what Google does is they take the, the snippets in your review. So what people say, and then they will use that based on the person's search term. I've noticed so, that like in, it, it'll especially. highlight, it'll yeah. highlight the keywords. Yep. Yeah. And the, it, especially in the map pack and it'll say like other related things right there. That's in exactly. this review pack or whatever. So that's why it's important to just like we talked about with constantly adding content to consistently add reviews because you're always going to have someone say something a little different. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's, it's going to help you in other ways. It's not really a ranking factor because if it was a ranking factor, it's just a, popularity contest who can who can get the most reviews and that's not really fair to anyone it doesn't mean that business is better than you it right, means yeah. are better they have maybe a better process mm-hmm. um so don't the, the think other thing you, that uh, that i noticed like back in the like, i feel like back in back in the day like last year year before last uh you couldn't really put just a rating you, you had to put some sort of words in it or something and then all of a sudden it, I, I started having pop, five star reviews pop up and i'm like well, fooey on you, like write something down. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> Take a second and write something down, write my name down, write our company down, write air conditioning down, you know, something. But I think, I think there's probably a professional way of asking with those, you know, with, uh, most of us have some kind of review platform or something that yeah. send those out automatically, but just kind of tweaking the language to uh, know that their personal feedback is important to you and your business because it is it, it is important it's important not only for you to know like what technician was there what they thought about that technician for you to make a management decision but it's also important for google to understand yeah and another thing <clears throat> that i've found with our reviews is i i'm thinking i don't know if this guy's gonna make it i don't know if he's like no like he just gives me the wrong vibe and all of a sudden five-star review 
this guy's doing, you know, great things. Five star review. He's doing amazing things. And I'm like, well, hell, maybe I can work with this guy. <laughs> <laughs> He's doing good stuff. People like him, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, so how, how, how important in our area, Yelp is, I would say irrelevant pretty much, but I know I, I see guys in California and I see like Travis and, and those guys and they're talking like they have hundreds or thousands of Yelp reviews. And I'm like, I got three and, or I, I have five and there's three of them that are hidden. Um, and that's my three best reviews. And then the other two are my worst reviews and they're the ones that are displayed. Yeah. Yelp is, Yelp is completely non-existent here. I mean, and we, we have a profile because it's important to have a profile, but that's about it. Okay. It's, uh, same it's dead here. I, California is like a super hot spot for Yelp. Um, and those guys honestly push or you can't technically push Yelp reviews, yeah, but right. they try to push Yelp reviews yeah. as much as possible. Hey, because nudge, of, nudge. Um, yeah. Yelp. You've ever heard of this platform called Yelp? Yeah. <laughs> that's a great platform. Don't you think? If you leave me a review, don't you think it'd be great to put it somewhere that's great? <laughs> like super, super ominous. Without being <laughs> ominous. And the word, the crazy thing is that sometimes I go into restaurants and I'll see like it says, check out our Yelp reviews or like check out our five star Yelp reviews or like it's almost like saying leave us a five-star yelp review but without saying it because they yeah. can't say that yeah yeah they for some uh, that's a whole nother <laughs> that's a whole nother, whole nother racket. yeah <laughs> so when when you're thinking about growing your business and um and and i'm gonna ask this question because it's it's been a hot topic in our inner circle here lately um and that is What's your thoughts on home warranty companies and and pay for leads companies like a, like a home advisor, Angie's List, Thumbtack, and there's another one out there that I can't even think of name of it, but it's pretty new and they've been calling me nonstop. Is it crap jack? I feel like it. It's probably it's not that, but it is crap fish. Um, but I, you know what? And I I noticed this one because it had some kind of certification on Google My Business. And I'm like, mm. Mm, what kind of certification is this? And then I looked at it and it's a pay for lead. So you literally paid for the certification. I'm like, well, that's junk. <laughs> so, um, and maybe it's because I, I love marketing. I, anything can work. Now, personally, my philosophy, I'm not a big ads guy or a big pay for lead person. However, anything can work. So before the last company I was at, I had to build a branch from scratch. And oh, I, I remember that. God, I had hired, that feels like forever ago. Doesn't it? Dang. Yeah. I forgot <laughs> about that. Yes. I that was a you. lifetime ago. Dang, um, yeah. But I had, I used Home Advisor, Thumbtack, Craftjack. Um, I didn't use Angie's List. I used some Facebook ads. I used a mix of everything. But the, the difference being in that business, I was growing it and I was like the person responding to everybody. So mm -hmm. I literally, I get a lead in and I was on it. Like I, I was texting and calling that person immediately. Mm -hmm. And that's why it worked at least a little while. I knew it was a, if, if you're small and you need to get leads, that's probably, it's a solid way for you. If, if you can instantly reply, like if, if you don't at five o'clock, turn off your, like you, you gotta be plugged in. That's so true. just true. as an FYI, if you're not plugged in or you don't Turn have someone in your company that's plugged in like me, you probably, it's probably not the best idea because that Saturday morning call, you have to be willing to go get it. So you, but you can turn those, you can turn them off though, right? Like at, in the yeah. afternoons, you can just turn them off and then on the weekends you can turn them off. Yeah. Yep. So, you can turn I mean, them off. Yeah. I mean, ugh. cause back when I experienced this, this is like, take this with a grain of salt. This is 2014, 15 maybe 16 ish, probably 14. Cause I probably did it for like a month and I was like, uh, uh, do we on y'all? Uh, I would, I would call the client back. I felt like it was instantly. I knew it was instantly. As soon as it popped up, like I had my phone in my hand, it'd come to the app and I'm click on the button, hit call. Oh no, I already have three companies coming. I'm like mm -hmm. what? Yeah. Like, that's worth crap. 
to me, it's a short-term strategy. The only other thing you could do in some of the softwares we've talked about, you can automatically get those uh, customers' information, especially their email address, and get it into your your marketing funnel, if you will. I don't want to go too deep into funnels, but your marketing, um, your email marketing and retargeting. So that way, at least you have the email address for later on. So if you, you've got something out of the deal, um, but ultimately you want to grow your own user base, your own referral network, because the, the company I was with the last year, the last full year was 2020 that we, I have numbers for, we did 2.5 million. So we're not, we're not huge and we're small market. I think our county is like 60,000 people, mm -hmm. but uh, we, 1.9 of that was referral, Google my business or SEO. So we did like, I don't know what, whatever percentage that is. Some math people can probably help me out there. 75% to 70%, something like that. Um, You're looking at and our, like, our six best, our six best revenue generator was local service ads. And that was the only, that was the first paid ads thing we had. Really? So, so everything I else mean, was all I hear is LSA, this LSA, that like it's, and, and that what you're saying is the exact, exactly what my records show the exact same thing. And I'm like, LSA is cool and everything, but it's I'm not, not getting the same be. results. You know, we we kill it on referrals, but LSA is like, ah. yeah, it's I get <clears throat> I get a couple of calls a week. What what can I do? LSA used to be great. Now I'm not getting any calls. Well, did you have you looked up your market? There's probably 50 companies on there. Yeah. So and if you are not using the local service dashboard to get reviews on that platform that are Google verified jobs, you're probably not going to rank very high. And you have to reply to every, like you have to put all that data in there. They want to know how you have to do it twice. Like you have to do it twice. Now I, I am talking to someone. He's a, he's another marketer tomorrow who, who supposedly has figured this out. So I'm going to figure. Oh, you got to let me know as soon as you figure. Yeah. It out, you, it, you know, him. you know, yeah. him. okay. So, uh, but uh, I will let you know um, if I, if, if, he says he's figured it out. He's got a dashboard for it, but we'll, we'll see. All right, cool, cool. <laughs> so what, what do you mean you have to put it in twice though? Well, you have your CRM program that you put the data in and then you got to go into uh, Google's platform, which honestly, most people don't have that open all day because you may get one or two calls that you have to do. Um, so, I mean, does it have but, to be that same day? Because typically I just like batch them because I, I like put in all of them from the week at, at one time. Well, think about it from a review response thing. Are, are you going to get responses more often or more oh, quickly uh, if you do it right away versus if you do it like at the end of the month? Oh, you're um, saying the review part of it. Yeah. So okay. for anyone listening to this, do furnace repair in your market. Mm -hmm. Look at the top three to five results. If most markets have at least a few companies doing this, generally speaking, the companies that are going to rank higher will have those Google verified job reviews first. And then they will have their regular reviews. Now it's not a hundred percent of the time, but like for, for, I actually just looked at it for the company I used to work for yesterday. It still pissed me off, even though I don't work there anymore, but yeah. um, there's a company that literally is an hour and one minute away, but they have like 30 Google verified job reviews and they're ranking ahead of us. They're an hour away. So that's the only thing I can find that really makes a difference. I have set bidding as high as, humanly possible yeah, i've said it at a million bucks before and it's like yeah it doesn't do anything in. so yeah used to work at no more they figured no, it out so I, I think reviews and answering the phone quickly is probably the only things that can really help you on that right now how, how do you how for those who don't know how can you tell that it's a google verified review from the google lsa versus a regular review um does yeah. it have a marking on it or something on the local service platform yeah, yeah, so the LSA ones versus a, a just a, like if they just went to your regular Google uh, listing and left your review. Yeah, if well, you won't see the LSA reviews on your Google My Business profile, but okay. you'll see all of the reviews on the local service ads profile. Okay. And those local service reviews will have this like little, it's like little gray text that says Google verified job. Oh, okay. And so... That's how you know if you have some. Gotcha. If you have no idea what we're talking about, you should probably look into it. <laughs> <laughs> that could be why you're not getting calls. 
Yes, could be why take, LSA is not, not working. Taking for you, notes. Let me take some notes here. <laughs> <laughs> <No>. <laughs> yeah, cool, man. Uh, we don't have a ton more. Woof. Yeah, we've been talking for a hot minute. Uh, you got anything else on your list? I know that you you got this whole list, and you'll send it over to me, and I'll add yeah, I mean, too. But I'll get you the list after the show. I mean, a lot of this stuff is why you're in the home, because marketing is not just before or just after. It's literally in almost everything you do, really? where you park your van, oh yeah, um, what you hand out to the customer, business cards, magnets on the unit, private labeling thermostats. Like, I mean it literally goes on and on and on but you, you have could to almost do something like that on those uh home warranty calls where like it's a lost leader but you have your thermostats logoed and then if they don't renew with their home warranty they still going to call you leave something behind and think about all the things you touch the most or where the customer is going to see it magnets are great mm. not and not just on the furnace or the air handler or the ac but on the refrigerator yeah, ain't nobody getting you know, here when it's like 145 degrees in the attic. Like nobody's you know, getting up there. No, they're not looking yeah. at the sticker on the air handler because uh, they're going to be like, "Uh, yeah, I'll pay whatever your fee is so that you climb in the attic and you look at whatever's going yep. on there." <laughs> yep. You know, another thing I've seen, I, I there's a, a plumber out in Oklahoma who I saw recently put this out there, but uh, the mats that you roll out. Yeah. Stuff you like know, that. This stuff doesn't really cost a lot of money. I was going to say it's, I was standing on one, but they just took it and washed it. <laughs> They're cleaning it? Yeah. Or they just took it away? <laughs> no. So we we have two of them. We have one. I mean, they're all logoed, and you put it at the front door, and then you take the other one in that's rolled up, and the guys lay it out and put their tool back on it. So then, Yeah. Because we people had- People love that. Like, they love that. They will tell people about that. Mm -hmm. Well, we got a, we didn't get a bad review. We got I got a phone call. Like, hey, your guy keeps putting his um, tool bag on my- hardwood floor well you know if you're an hvac guy and you know the vetoes and the uh the klein bags that have the hard rough plastic bottoms mm -hmm. and you throw that on some one inch thick hardwood floor so you won't get some funky looks you know what i mean so yep. laying that rug out and then puts your bag on it and then even if your bag's dirty from where you set it at the outdoor unit now that dirt and mud's not sitting there on their floor so yeah, yeah. but I guess as to, to kind of to wrap it up in a neat little uh, bow is I would challenge anyone listening to this to think, to think of touch points with the customer and how you can increase that, increase your branding, increase the awareness, um, increase the asks for referral. And, and honestly, if you're, if you're a one man shop and you're not asking for reviews and referrals, you, you might not be a business owner. Like you need to be asking and you, otherwise that's food on your table. You have yeah. to care that much to grow your business. And if you don't, you probably should be an employee. Yeah. And that's so true too, because we think as, as business owners and, and even service tech service experts, and we get in there and we're like, Oh, this is awkward. I don't want to ask these people for a review. I don't want to ask these people for a referral. But in reality, it, they will do it if you ask for it, but they don't, they don't always understand or fully grasp how important it is to the business. So it's like, oh yeah, okay, that makes sense. Yep. I'd be more than happy to, to do that because I love exactly what you did. You blew us away with customer service. Uh, you called before you came out here. Like you called mm -hmm. to let me know that you're on your way. I'd love to refer you to someone else. Yep. Um, and so, yeah, totally. I'm, I'm, I'm right there with you on that. You know, and that's, that's the thing. It's, it doesn't, you don't have to spend a ton of money. Okay. Yeah, you just, you point. don't, you have, you just have to rewire your brain a little bit to think differently. And, and honestly, and, and I'm notorious for this in these Facebook groups. If I need an answer to something, I will fucking ask until I get it. So <laughs> yeah, I will just keep, just keep finding going. someone to talk to. <laughs> but that's but that's the that's the mentality you have to have when you own your business. Like if you can't figure something out, you just have to keep asking until you find the right person to get that information from. That's true. But you are relentless. <sighs> I mean, it is. I don't like to think so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Brian and I, Brian. I apologize. I'm not even going to try and pronounce your last name because. I will hack it up um, in the live Facebook group. Um, he, uh, he said, uh, if you do a five-star job, 
you better take be taking credit for it. And yep. I agree with that 100%. And well doing, doing exactly what they expected is not a five-star job. That's a three-star job. Going above and beyond is a five-star job. That's exactly what um, that's exactly what I I believe. I mean, I believe that wholeheartedly. I, if you did not go above and beyond, don't ask for the five-star review. Well, and that's also how you can charge more for repairs. So you don't have to do as many calls. <laughs> that's another good point. Yeah. Like we could talk about conversion and like how that plays. You don't even need more calls. You just need to convert better. Um, but yeah, that's another zero <laughs> cost item on the list of things. Focus on training. Different. They're like literally guys are giving away tips like out of their freaking eyeballs. Jason Walker, Joe Cressara, all these guys. It's, 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 the information is everywhere mm-hmm. if you just look for it. Mike A. Disney. Mike, Mike is great. He'll go on for, he'll go on for two hours if you yeah. ask him to. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. And just th- these guys are a wealth of knowledge and just tap into it. And I mean, listen to the podcast. I heard this is a really good one. It's called service business mastering has some pretty good guests on it, but the host, he sucks, but uh guests, they're great. So. so uh, and if you know anyone that likes listening to podcasts, have them tune in. Yeah. Make sure you send this podcast to them yeah. and give a five star review. That too, yeah. See, I am horrible for asking. You know, hey, you like this? Leave a five star review. Where have you heard this? I mean, obviously not on Facebook. You can't give a five star review there, but yeah, do that. Cool, man. Thanks, thanks for coming on the show. Thanks for sharing. I love talking to you. I mean, we talk. We've talked literally. We've been on the phone for hours before talking. So, I mean, legit. I enjoy conversation with you. So, I appreciate you coming and sharing. Yeah, thanks, sir. It's just a lot of fun. I appreciate it. Yeah, but anybody that's listening to or watching this, uh, don't hesitate to reach out to Josh. I didn't even ask Josh. How can they get in touch with me? <laughs> um, I'm all over Facebook, so you can you can find me there. Um, I'm in literally most of the best practice groups, just trying to help and learn myself still. Um, otherwise, uh, relentless-digital.org is our website. You can certainly reach me there as well. Cool, man. Thank you. Thank you again for coming on the show. Yeah, appreciate it, Tersh. Get yeah. back to your training. Oh, yeah. I got to Oh, yeah. Got to learn how to <laughs> send these people in certain places. Anyways, thank you all for watching the show. Uh, if you have any questions, reach out to me. Reach out to Josh. Uh, we, we're both more than willing to help in any way we can. Uh, and Josh uh, Scoville. Scoville? Scoville? Man, see, I told you. I'm, Josh Scoville. He's from my state. Is he? Yeah, yeah he's from so, Jamesville. There you go. What's up, Josh? He, he said Josh is full of golden nuggets uh, <laughs> and the good golden nuggets. He's not, yeah. So uh, <laughs> he, he highly recommends Josh. He used you. So cool. Awesome. Thank you, everybody, for watching the show. If you have any questions, like I said, don't hesitate to reach out to me. Uh, this is the Service Business Mastery Podcast. It is a podcast focused on service business owners, managers, and technicians who are considering becoming business owners themselves. If you have any questions, reach out. Until we talk again next week, be safe and uh, yeah, see you. Peace.